Uh, and he looked at these patterns. If you go there today, I think I have pictures of the walls of the Sphinx enclosure in there. And it's just these deeply eroded vertical channels. And, and the Sphinx body is harder to tell because it's been restored so many times. The, the ancient Egyptians restored it. The Romans restored it. We restored it a couple different times. Assholes. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> fine. But the nice thing is the walls of the enclosure really haven't been touched. So you can see the natural erosive patterns. And he looked at that and went, that's rainfall erosion. But not mm. just some rainfall erosion, literally the result of thousands of years. It's the only way you would get these patterns in the stone is thousands of years of rainfall erosion. Obviously, Giza's are really, really dry. I mean, Egypt's a really dry place these days. You have to go back to time periods pre-4000 BC when the Sahara was a savanna. It was grasslands with lake basins and river systems, and it had a lot more rain. You didn't have this annual flood um, you know, uh, cycle that you have now. It's, it was like a lot more rainfall. It was much more verdant and green. The Giza Plateau would have been green. Which and makes it was sense a, that that's why they would settle there in the first place. 